forget everything you thought you knew about human evolution. Archaeologists just discovered who really lived in Denisova Cave in Siberia. Denisova Cave in the Altai Mountains was home to archaic humans for a quarter million years, including Denisovans, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. The question is, who lived there when and in what order? Denisova Cave is a crossroads of human evolution, deep in Siberia's Altai Mountains. Over tens of thousands of years, it was inhabited by various hominin species, not necessarily in this order, Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, and, of course, Denisovans, the elusive group discovered only recently at this site. Denisovans are an ancient human group. The genetic analysis of a tooth and a tiny finger bone discovered in Denisova Cave in Siberia's Altai Mountains provided our first tantalizing glimpse of the Denisovans. The fossil record of these mysterious humans is extremely limited, with only four fragments of bone and teeth and a jawbone discovered in Tibet. Their DNA, however, has revealed that they shared a common ancestor with the Neanderthals and our species, Homo sapiens, around 765,000 years ago. After this ancestor population split, our branch of the human family tree went to Africa, while the Neanderthal, Denisovan branch moved deeper into Eurasia. The Eurasian branch had split by 430,000 years ago, giving rise to the Neanderthals in western Eurasia and the Denisovans in the east. It's unclear why the Denisovans and Neanderthals split, but a new theory suggests that as the Arctic ice sheet expanded southwards to the Black Sea, cutting Europe off from Asia, it separated the early humans into the east and west groups mentioned above. These splits, however, were not permanent. Members of the three populations met and interbred after tens of thousands of years of independent evolution. As a result, 5% of the Denisovan genome survives, not in Siberia, but in people living thousands of kilometers away in Southeast Asia, particularly in Papua New Guinea. Indeed, we now know that Denisovans interbred with modern humans in at least two locations, East Asia and further southeast, in Indonesia or Australasia. Furthermore, most Tibetans have a stretch of Denisovan DNA that helps them deal with low oxygen levels at altitude. This points to H, interbreeding. Humans were able to colonize Earth's highest plateau thanks to Sapiens and Denisovans. We have hard evidence of Denisovans in two places, Denisova Cave in Siberia and Baishia Karst Cave on the Tibetan Plateau. Most anthropologists believe the Siberian cave was their northern limit because it was too cold further north. However, genetic evidence suggests that they lived much further south than Tibet, roaming vast areas of Asia as far south as Indonesia. Because of low sea levels at the time the Denisovans lived, Indonesia was connected to mainland Asia. However, lands further south were still cut off, and there is no reason to believe they made it to Australia. There are several potential Denisovan fossils from China to the east. Several bones from Zhujiayao in northern China and two craniums from Xuchang in central China are among them. None of these, like a jawbone discovered off the coast of Taiwan, fit the profile of a known species, so they are likely Denisovans. To the west, an arm bone from Kyrgyzstan's Selungur cave could also be Denisovan but attempts to extract ancient DNA from it have failed. Furthermore, startling new scientific evidence will be reviewed by international experts, which, if true, will transform our understanding of early man's skills and sophistication. It is already known as the world's oldest stone bracelet, believed to have been made by the extinct Denisovan species of early humans rather than ancient Homo sapiens, and previously dated to be between 40,000 and 50,000 years old. The bracelet was discovered in stratum 11 of the world-famous Denisova cave in Siberia's Altai region. According to new research, it could have been buried 65,000 to 70,000 years ago, long before ancient people were thought to be capable of creating such remarkable objects. The object itself could be even older, but its age cannot be determined. The bracelet is thought to have been worn only on special occasions by a very important woman or child. Scientists believe it was created by our Denisovan ancestors and demonstrates that they were far more advanced than previously thought. The bracelet is stunning, in bright sunlight, it reflects the sun's rays, and at night, by the fire, it casts a deep shade of green. It is unlikely that it was used as everyday jewelry. I believe this lovely and delicate bracelet was only worn for special occasions. The bracelet was discovered in the Altai Mountains' famous Denisova cave which is known for its paleontological finds dating back to the Denisovans, also known as Homo altiensis, 
an extinct species of humans genetically distinct from Neanderthals and modern humans. The bracelet, made of chlorite, was discovered in the same layer as the remains of some prehistoric people and is thought to be theirs. The manufacturing technology was more common in a much later period, such as the Neolithic era, which made the discovery all the more remarkable. Indeed, it is unclear how the Denisovans could have created the bracelet with the skills they possessed. Two bracelet fragments measuring 2.7 cm in width and 0.9 cm in thickness were discovered. The find's estimated diameter was 7 cm. A drilled hole with a diameter of about 0.8 cm was located near one of the cracks. Scientists studying them discovered that the drill's rotational speed was relatively high, fluctuations were minimal, and drilling with an implement was used, a more recent technology. The ancient master possessed skills previously thought to be uncharacteristic of the Paleolithic era, such as drilling with an implement, boring tool-type rasp, grinding and polishing with leather and skins of varying degrees of tanning. Chlorite was not found near the cave and is thought to have traveled at least 200 kilometers, demonstrating how valuable the material was at the time. The bracelet had been damaged, with visible scratches and bumps, though some of the scratches appeared to have been sanded down. Experts believe the piece of jewelry also had other adornments to enhance its beauty. A limited polished zone of intensive contact with some soft organic material can be seen next to the hole on the bracelet's outer surface. Scientists believe it was a leather strap with a charm, and that the charm was quite heavy. Because of the location of the polished section, the top and bottom of the bracelet could be identified, as well as the fact that it was worn on the right hand. Further investigation of the site revealed other artifacts dating back as far as 125,000 years. Scientists believe the bracelet proves that Denisovans, who are now extinct, were more advanced than Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. We discovered interesting things in the same layer where we discovered a Denisovan bone, previously. These were thought to be the hallmark of the emergence of Homo sapiens. First and foremost, there were symbolic items such as jewelry, including a stone bracelet and a ring carved out of marble. These discoveries were made using technological methods, boring stone, drilling with an implement, grinding, that are traditionally thought to be typical of a later time, and they were used nowhere else in the world so early, in the Paleolithic era. We initially associated the discoveries with a progressive form of modern human, but it has now been revealed that this was fundamentally incorrect. These things were obviously left by Denisovans. But could this modern-looking bracelet have been buried with older remains, perhaps dug into the cave floor to hide it in a later era? The experts considered this possibility but rejected it, claiming that the layers were uncontaminated by later human intervention. Oxygen isotopic analysis was also used to date the soil around the bracelet. Its creator's abilities were flawless. Archaeologists initially assumed it was created by Neanderthals or modern humans, but it was discovered that the master was Denisovan. For the woman who wore it, the bracelet was most likely a status symbol and a symbol of power. It could also have served a religious purpose, shielding the wearer from evil spirits. It is unlikely it was used as an everyday jewelry piece, says Anatoly Derevyanko, a leading Russian archaeologist, who believes this lovely and delicate bracelet was only worn for special occasions. The archaeologist hypothesized that the final wearer died as a result of a violent death because the bracelet was shattered by a strong blow, while the wearer was attempting to protect herself by raising her hands. Is this a sign of conflict between modern humans and the ancient Siberian inhabitants? The discoveries dating, around 65,000 years ago, is suspect because this is when modern humans began aggressive colonization of the world beyond their African homelands. We can speculate that there was violent conflict and resistance by the natives toward the invaders based on modern history of humans expanding into new territories, and replacing other humans. Certain tribes may have been welcoming and diplomatic in some cases, but humans are a territorial species that will not give up their ancestral homelands without a fight. Indeed, if the Neanderthals are any indication, their Denisvan cousins were not pacifists. However, there is little direct evidence to show when and why the Denisovans went extinct. The most recent interbreeding with Homo sapiens may have occurred only 30,000 years ago. It's possible that they interbred so much that they merged with the rest of the early human population. Alternatively, upon arrival in Denisovan territory, Homo sapiens may have outcompeted or killed their cousins, or brought with them lethal diseases.
If we accept that Denisovans lived from Siberia to Indonesia, you have very different climatic and environmental circumstances. As a result, there is unlikely to be a single answer. This discovery, along with the discovery that living humans contain genes from both Denisovans and Neanderthals, has fueled a debate over how to classify these Stone Age peoples. In fact, the researchers who discovered Denisovans never claimed they were a separate species. There is currently a heated debate over whether H. sapiens, Neanderthals, and Denisovans are all members of the same species. Studies take great care to avoid referring to them as a species. Whereas Neanderthals are known as Homo neanderthalensis, Denisovans are known as a population. This is due in part to the fact that we know so little about them, but there are other reasons. According to Jean-Jacques Hublin of the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology, species names are just labels we use to make sense of the world, and there is no hard line separating us from Denisovans. We are linked by an interfecundity chain that dates back 65 million years to a small squirrel-like primate that lived in a tree, he says. Furthermore, modern humans, Neanderthals and Denisovans could all interbreed, which according to some definitions means that none of them are separate species. Another complication is that Denisovans appear to have been divided into two groups, those with genes found in mainland Asia and those with genes found in Melanesia. Combining them may be an oversimplification.